Once, we try using a 100-ton hydraulic press to crush a railway rail. But as it turned out, the rail is not such an undestructible thing. And 100 tons is clearly not enough for this. In the comments, someone wrote that you can try to cool the rail in liquid nitrogen and see if its strengths will change. And indeed, I also saw in one video that allegedly, a rail cooled in liquid nitrogen can be broken with a sledgehammer. But personally, I somehow doubt it. In principle, liquid nitrogen is not so expensive, but the problem is to buy it. You need to be a doer's vessel. This is an 80 level thermos in which liquid nitrogen is transported. Perhaps if you live in Moscow or St. Petersburg, then renting is not a problem. I had to buy it, and it even cost me here. It's still Soviet and it cost a lot. But at least now we have nitrogen. With the help of a bucket and a barrel and several cylinders of mounting foam, I made another container. We will fill it with liquid nitrogen and we already immerse various objects there. It's good that it's winter now and it's minus 5 outside. Nitrogen will not evaporate so quickly. The temperature of liquid nitrogen is almost minus 200 and when we immerse the rail there, the temperature which is 0 degrees there is specifically building such bubbly. This is equivalent fact that we will immerse the rail with a temperature of 300 degrees in boiling water. After 20 minutes, the bubbling stopped. At the same time, about 30% of nitrogen evaporated. In total, these pieces of iron lay in liquid nitrogen for almost two hours. To begin with, let's try to crush such a small rail. The rail is on the minimum. Once we already pressed such a rail, not cooled, it took almost a maximum load of 90 tons to destroy it. Let's see how a cooled rail behaves. But in reality, the same 90 tons. It seems like nothing has changed in terms of load. Now let's try to freeze one of the most plastic metals lid. Now let's try to freeze one of the most plastic metals, lead. Cut it into two identical pieces. We'll put one in nitrogen and we won't freeze the other. And so the first in line is a piece of lead with a temperature of plus five degrees. principle it was expected and now super cold lead In reality, the same thing. Nothing has changed. What is warm and what is cold is the same. And now, let's try to break a small rail.
Previously, we couldn't break it, only bend it. But here, the cold was clearly not very good for him. Recently, we checked what kind of load a piece of ice can withstand, but frozen to minus 20 degrees. The ice cracked under a load of 180 kilograms. What kind of load will the ice cool to almost 200 degrees withstand? Something this is super cool ice does not hold a load at all, a little more than 10 kilograms. By the way, this super cool ice looks more like some pieces of either glass or plastic. And now is the turn of the full fledged railway rail. There is one legend among the trackmen. In ancient times, the trackmen who made a detour of the railway tracks made a sewing needle on the rails. In severe frost, when the rain was passing through the needle, a crack formed in this place. The trackman allegedly discovered this crack and received the bonus for it. Today we'll check it out. Only we'll now have a train rail, but a hundred ton hydraulic press, and a hundred tons is several times more than the load of any wheel of a train. Only it's not quite clear how to put the needle along or across. Okay, let's put it across. Well, I don't see any cracks here. Although the needle is specifically pressed into the rail. We will try once again. We'll put the needle along. It was heard how with a load of 60 tons, something snapped. Apparently, it's a needle burst. Yes, without a doubt, still cold to such ultra low temperatures becomes more brittle, but not at the point of a glass that could be crushed here with the sledgehammer. And also, I always want to do an interesting spray with nitrogen. By the way, this rail, which we try to crush with the press, lay on the street for another two hours, and during this time it heated up to minus 40 degrees. Now, we'll try to freeze gasoline and nitrogen, and then set it on fire. The freezing point of gasoline is about 60 degrees below zero. Gasoline ice is now being dug out on this cooled rail. The ice will not melt so quickly. Well, and gasoline is not burning. At the moment, a piece of plastic cup is burning. Gasoline is so cool that no fumes come from it and it does not burn. Over time, over time, it begins to warm up, melt, and begins to ignite. We have enough hydrogen left for one more experiment. Let's try to cool massive piece of iron on it. Now let's see what happens if you pour water on this piece of iron, the temperature of which is about plus one degree. The water freezes instantly.
Only the ice turns out to be so packed but white. It's like we're not pouring water but some kind of paint or wax. That's right, looks like wax. Suggest in the comments what would you like to see cooled in liquid nitrogen under pressure. It's not for nothing that I bought these mega hefty thermos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel who hasn't subscribed to it yet.